Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the making of my Philippine custom-made Alama guitar. In this video, I'm going to show you in chronological order what William Alama has sent me. And without further ado, without wasting your time, let's move on. So this is the first video that William sent me. Right now, he actually is cutting two sheets of light red Miranti. And I'm guessing it's bookmatched. I hope so. But anyways, I really don't mind if it's not bookmatched, but it would be great if it is. So the clips are there. Like the black clips you see on the sides are there to hold the pieces firmly together while cutting the body shape. So the wood that he is going to use, which we both agreed upon, is the so-called Philippine mahogany, specifically light red Miranti. And under the Philippine mahogany, there's like four different kinds. We settled for the light red Miranti because that's the only wood source that he could find easily and he had stock when I ordered. So don't confuse it with genuine mahogany because it is not that. And as you can see, he's cutting the body size profile. If you're going to ask what's the body size I've chosen, so a little hint for you guys, it's a small bodied guitar. And that, that's the only info I'm going to divulge right now. I wanted the woods used to build my custom guitar sourced in the Philippines. So the reason why the front, back and sides and including the neck is made from light red Miranti or Philippine mahogany. Now he is using a thickness drum sander to give the wooden sheets the right thickness. He didn't tell me how thick or thin he makes his guitar tops. I really didn't want to know since every good luthier has their own trade secrets. Besides, I don't think he's going to tell me either. He is now on the process of bending the wood to be used for the sides and he clearly is using a homemade bending iron, a round pipe and a butane torch which is very resourceful of him. So this would be one of the processes that's really time consuming since you don't want to bend the wood too fast and destroy the grain of the wood. So if you're wondering why good handmade guitars, especially Alama guitars, are a bit expensive this is why. As a guitar hobbyist and collector, to watch a video of how my guitar is being made by a luthier having immense passion for his craft is a privilege. When the bending is all finished, he puts the size on a guitar block designated to the body shape to retain its form so that the wood will not deform. If you've watched the video for this long, then you'd already know that the guitar size I've opted for is a single 018. So he's using a hair dryer right now to condition the wood for gluing. He will be gluing, I believe, a so-called neck block where the guitar neck will be attached. And later in the video, he's going to attach the heel block for added rigidity and body shape integrity. When I ordered my custom guitar from Mr. Alama, I told him that I wanted a body size that is a replica of a CF Martin single 018 since I have an affinity for small bodied guitars and an immense appreciation for CF Martin guitars also. I hope you guys understand that when I say a replica of a Martin single 018, it's only the body size that I'm talking about because for the most part, it's William's technique skill, creativity, along with his team that's being represented here and will be reflected on the final product of their combined efforts. So after clamping the blocks firmly, he is surely going to scrape off excess glue. Mm. At this moment, so he's going to hand plane the front and back sides so that when they are glued together, they are perfectly straight and flush with each other. You really won't get this level of attentiveness and patience if you're going to buy the mass produced guitars, especially the ones made from China. And yes, guitars from China are cheap and very affordable. But if you have money to spare, 
then go on and buy yourself a guitar made with heart and soul. You'll never get the same quality, attentiveness, and passion of a small bench guitar luthier compared to a mass-produced one. If you ever do decide to buy a guitar made in the Philippines, make sure that they are good at their craft and on the path to greatness, the reason why I chose Alama guitars. In short, don't buy your Philippine-made guitars from luthiers who suck at making guitars because at the end of the day, your well-earned money deserves a good quality guitar. I'm very certain that this is the front side of the guitar. He already made sure that it's straight and level, so the only thing to do is glue them together with the help of twine to compress it together towards the middle. So you're going to see this. There you go guys. Unfortunately, we have to end the episode, but don't be sad. There are going to be several episodes coming up in a few weeks or maybe months or maybe tomorrow. You'll never know. So if you do like this video, kindly click on the like button and kindly support us by subscribing. Thank you very much. And if you want to know more about Alama Guitars, links down below. Supportahan natin ang gawang Pinoy!